Hey everyone, Cashew Paul here. Today I'm in Glendale, Ohio at Oak Hill Cemetery. On this adventure, we're going to take a look at someone whose death is probably better known than their career. Today, we're going to look at the life and death of actress Peg Entwistle. Peg was born in England in 1908. And when she was young, her family moved to New York. Shortly thereafter, her mother died and her father remarried and had two sons. Then, several years later, her father was crossing Park Avenue and was struck and killed by a hit and run driver. The sons were sent to live with their uncle Harold, but Peg remained in New York to pursue an acting career. In an interview, Betty Davis said that she had seen Peg perform on stage in Ibsen's The Wild Duck and wanted to be just like her. In 1927, Peg met and married Robert Keith, who was an actor and 10 years her senior. He claimed he had never been married before, but when Peg was at her mother-in-law's house, she saw a photo of a boy on the mantle. When she asked who it was, she told Peg it was Robert's son, Brian. Some of you may know Brian Keith, Robert's son, as Uncle Bill from the TV show Family Affair. Peg decided to pursue a film career, so she moved to California and lived with her uncle Harold in his home on Beechwood Drive, which still exists today. She had stage success as she appeared at the Belasco Theater in The Mad Hopes. She starred with Humphrey Bogart and Billy Burke. And you may remember Billy Burke's name from The Wizard of Oz. She was Glenda the Good Witch. Peg's big break came when RKO Pictures cast her in the film 13 Women, but her good fortune was short-lived. After a couple of test audiences watched the film, RKO edited her part out so badly that she went from a supporting role to a cameo. And it was to be her only film. When RKO dropped her option, Peg was distraught. Finally, on September 16, 1932, she told her uncle she was going to the store. Instead, she walked up to the Hollywood Land sign. The Hollywood Land sign was used to promote a housing development. Peg found a ladder at the H, took off her coat and purse, laid it down on the ground, climbed the ladder, and jumped off the H to her death. A woman who was hiking found Peg's belongings and took them to the police station. Having no leads, they published an article in the newspaper describing what they found. Her uncle Harold, who hadn't seen her in a couple days, figured it must have been Peg's belongings. Her uncle identified Peg's body and she was taken to Struther Funeral Home. She was then taken to what is now Hollywood Forever Cemetery and cremated. She was brought here to be buried next to her father. The Hollywood sign was rebuilt in 1978 and part of the original H Peg jumped from is in the Hollywood Museum in a Peg Entwistle exhibit. In the exhibit, it includes a copy of her suicide note, which reads, I am afraid I am a coward. I am sorry for everything. If I had done this a long time ago, it would have saved a lot of pain. P.E. She was only 24 years old. It's rumored that a couple of days after Peg's death, a letter came offering her the lead role in a play. Kind of an ironic footnote is that Brian Keith who was Peg's stepson, later committed suicide himself. He was suffering from emphysema and lung cancer. And two months prior to that, his daughter Daisy had committed suicide and left no note. Well, that's the end of our adventure. I know it wasn't exactly a happy story, but I think Peg's story is rather interesting. If you liked my video, please click on the subscribe button down below. Also, please click on the notification bell so you know when I release new material. I also include a link to my Patreon page if you want to contribute to my channel. Until next time, this is Cashew, signing off.